In this lecture, we're going to look at level sets. So here's the definition. Suppose we have an equation of the form z equals f of x and y. So f is a scalar valued function on two variables. A level set of f is a set of points from the domain of f such that f on those points equals the same fixed number c. So for example, you may call the five level set the set of points in the domain satisfying the property that when plugged into f, the output is five. I've written this definition as though f were a function on two variables, but you could define the same type of object for functions of three variables or more. If we're looking at level sets for functions of two variables, we may call them level curves because the graph may form a curve in R2. Or if we look at level sets for functions on three variables, we may call them level surfaces because their graphs could form a surface in R3. Then given a function and a family of level sets, we often put together what we call a contour diagram, which if you've ever gone hiking is kind of like a topographic map. It's a picture of several level sets in the domain. Let's discuss the form of the level curves for the function f of x and y equals x squared plus y squared, and then we'll sketch a contour diagram. So what I like to do is imagine I fixed a number c. Then you ask yourself, what points in the domain of this function would get sent to c when we plug them into f? In particular for this function, that's like asking what points x and y would satisfy x squared plus y squared equals c? So my first remark is if c is negative, no points would satisfy this. If c is zero, the origin would satisfy this. So the origin would be the zero level set. And then for positive values of c, we would be looking at the circle of radius square root of c. So now we're going to take a few different values of c, sketch the level sets in the domain, so that's the xy plane, and that's going to form the contour diagram. So keep in mind this picture we're drawing lives in the domain of f. Here's the zero level set. That's just the origin. Then if we let c equal one, we're looking at the unit circle. If c equals two, we're looking at the circle centered at the origin whose radius is the square root of two. If c equals three, we just go outward a little bit the circle would have radius square root of three, et cetera. So this is an example of a contour diagram. It's a picture in the domain that tries to give us a sense of the shape of the graph of this function by telling us where we can look for different types of altitudes for this scalar value function. Okay, let's look at a couple other examples. Let's find the level curves for the function of two variables, f of x and y equals cosine of x times y, and then we'll sketch a contour diagram. First, we imagine that we fixed a constant c. What points x and y would satisfy that cosine of x times y equals the same constant c? Let me start with possibly the easiest value of c to work with, and that is c equal to one. If cosine of x times y equals one, then that means x times y is an integer multiple of two pi. This equation would be satisfied by either axes, x equals zero or y equals zero. If x is non-zero, then this is a hyperbola of the form y equals two pi n over x. In general, for outputs f, we're gonna get level sets that look like this. So what I mean by this is if k is an angle for which cosine of k equals the output c, then one level curve would look like xy equals k plus two pi n, which is again going to define a family of hyperbola. This is not an easy example to sketch by hand, so let me show you a contour diagram that I generated in a computer. So here you can see the different level curves and how they look like hyperbola. 
Hopefully by looking at this, you can start to imagine the shape of this function. So you see it kind of has these waves. And here's the actual graph of the function. So the goal with these level sets and this contour diagram is to increase our understanding of what the graph of this function would look like. For our next example, let's find the level surfaces of the function of three variables given by f of x, y, and z equals x squared plus y squared plus z squared. There are no level surfaces corresponding to negative values of c. If c equals zero, the level set is the origin. Otherwise, for positive values of c, we're looking at spheres centered at the origin whose radius is the square root of c. So here's a contour diagram for this function. So our contour diagram would look like concentric spheres centered at the origin. This is a picture we're drawing in R3, which is the domain for this function. So while we can't sketch this function, this contour diagram gives us a feel for how it behaves. At the origin, it's zero, and then as we move away from the origin, the function is increasing. Okay, let me summarize the difference between cross sections and level sets for functions of the form z equals f of x and y, because I think sometimes students get these two notions confused. So where do cross sections live? When we say we're grabbing a cross section, what kind of picture are we drawing? And the answer is that cross sections live on the graph of the function. So if our function is a function of two variables, then when we draw a cross section, we're drawing a picture in R3. That's where the graph of the function is. Level sets, on the other hand, belong to the domain. In other words, if we're looking at a function of the form z equals f of x and y, we would be drawing level sets in R2. If we're looking at a graph like z equals x squared plus y squared, the picture is in R3, but sometimes we can bind the two pictures together. Down here, the floor of this picture is the xy plane as a subset of R3. So I may sketch level sets here, knowing that I'm essentially translating them from the domain to the xy plane in R3. As we already saw for this function, the level sets look like concentric circles centered at the origin, so they look like this. Comparing the level sets to the function, you can see the relationship that all points on the same level set get mapped to the same z elevation. They get mapped to the same function output. On the other hand, if I want to look at a cross section, say I'm going to illustrate the y equals zero cross section, I'm going to draw that right on the graph of the surface. So this curve here would be like slicing into this paraboloid with the plane y equals zero. I hope this helps you distinguish between level sets and cross sections. Thank you for your attention.